Welcome back to another Turnscapes video. I want to welcome everybody, especially new viewers who might be dropping in. But if this is your first video on my channel, welcome. Thank you for coming. You're in the wrong spot. You need to go back and see part one and part two of this little mini series. I don't know where that comes from. Uh, floor squeaky so that you can understand some of what's going on in this video and then go back and take a look at the Tour of Innsmouth playlist, which will show you the inception of this project and uh, how we got to where we are. We, because we're all together. We're all in this together. In this final part, I'm gonna show you how I glued the spokes in and how I used a hardboard jig to make the rims, at least a guide of how that happened, and finish the construction of the large rear wheels. So let's go back in time since I already did the work and I'll show you what I did. And at this point, I should insert some like really goofy, cheesy time travel transition. I've been using um, this bottle uh, is was was a uh, plastic weld, which is a great uh, plastic solvent, uh, but that had dried up. So I've actually filled it with uh, Xylol. I don't know why it says Xylor. Um, this is not a, you know, I don't recommend this. It's not the healthiest chemical to uh, be working with, but you know, the, the dose makes the poison as they say, meaning that low exposures to things, even if they're bad is not as bad as prolonged exposure to things, even if they're not that bad, if that makes any sense, right? A small dose, um, not too bad. So, um, I've been using, um, paintbrush for it. And that has been working out pretty well. Uh, but this time I want to try to make sure I don't flood any of the areas and have the, uh, and have the solvent really wick into flood, I should say, down, uh, down the sides, which is going to give me that mushy bottom that I had in the last wheel. And the xylol uh, and, and plastic weld would be the same. And please, uh, nobody put a comment up about what's healthy and what's not and what protective gear I should be wearing. Please, people have done that in the past many, many times. I take my personal responsibility for my own safety. And if you feel like you need more protective gear, go for it. But um, because it stays a little soft for a while, I thought I'd also try with this wheel to make some final adjustments on some of the spokes while well, things are a little uh, gooey, as you might you might say. Do this. So let's see what I can do here. And also because um, it softens the plastic, I'm thinking I should be able to maybe squeeze some things into tighter spots than I would have been able to before. That one does not look like it wants to come up. All right, let me stay. If I can get this one up, I would be pretty happy. Huh? Huh. And sorry if I sounded a little aggressive about the don't tell me about protective gear. Um, I know it is often uh, mentioned out of uh, loving concern for my personal health, and I appreciate that thought. Uh, but I just wanted to try to stem them uh, off. Oh, this one's off. What's wrong with that one? Oh, this is much better, though, adjusting these after... Just, just a little play. Hmm. 
Hmm. Hmm. Although I won't be able to make. Oh. Hmm. I will say I don't think this came out quite as well as I had hoped. Um. But it's the first time I've ever tried anything uh, with this kind of uh, precision. This is all this is all new ground for me. So uh, kind of uh, working it out as I go. But this wheel is better than the last wheel for sure. So I feel pretty confident this wheel will be um, facing the viewer. Just checking to see if they're all hitting the rim equally. And uh, they really aren't. These in the back here are sitting a little too deep, I don't think. Hmm. Maybe. Okay, well. Applying that solvent first really made a difference for making final adjustments. I'm very pleased with that. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside and let that uh, fully cure, or at least mostly cure before I pull it from the Sculpey jig and get to work on the uh, larger rear wheels. This is the hardboard that I used to make the uh, jig for um, pressing in the styrene strips to make the wheels. I might have shown this in the past. I can't remember. Um, what I did is I applied some uh, wax paste to the inside so that it, the um, super glue would not stick to it when I applied glue to the seams of the styrene strips. Uh, so that's why you see this uh, stain pattern. However, um, it still did stick a little bit to the side. And so that left a little bit of material on the wheels that I had to clean off, which was um, required some sanding on the exterior of the wheel along the, the rim, if you will. Uh, but otherwise, it worked fairly well. And I just cut this out with a hole saw. I have one that's a, you know, you can select multiple sizes and slot them in. It's not a great hole saw, but it's nice that it has variable sizes. And so that was how I created this, this jig. So this is the second uh, front wheel that I completed. And I'm much happier, I'm much happier about this one. Uh, if you look at the two, uh, this one has, you know, several spokes that are a little bit out of alignment. Now, this one has a couple that are, uh, you know, not equally spaced, but it's much better. I actually did a little more trimming of the uh, spokes where they meet the hub and so that they could fit a little bit better. And I have... Um, I definitely done a better job of getting them uh, centered on the rim. So this is definitely going to be the wheel that faces the viewer. Uh, and it's also a little bit uh, more centered spaced on the hub as well. So I was much more pleased with how this one came out. And then I wanted to work on the large wheel. And when I was looking at it and thinking about the spokes in the hub, making those a little bit larger, I realized that the wheel itself should probably be a little thicker. And so if you notice the difference here, what I did is I added another layer of styrene on the inside to bulk up that thickness. And luckily I uh, was able to just fit it right into the original slot. That's in there, still a tight fit. Come on, there we go. All right, so it's still a tight fit. Uh, but then I could put it back into the form, and then I could press in the uh, inner piece of styrene and get that uh, to sit right. The one tip, actually, that I really would recommend is, uh, as I said earlier, um, Plastruck, Plastiweld, or some kind of similar solvent, because it's not super glue or CA, when it maybe squeezes out a little bit, it doesn't 
uh, you know, say stick to the substrate beneath it and it wouldn't have stuck to the uh, hardboard if I had started using it right away. And it leaves things a little pliable so I could kind of play with it for a few seconds while I was trying to get it lined up and get it set in there. Plus, I could really hold it in the spots where it meets and be able to get um, an, a firmer seating so that it was more round. Hello, Suf. Hi. Oh, cat intermission. That's uh, Suf's feet. Where are you going? Okay. He likes to climb up on the top of the shelves. So I try to leave space for him so that he can access it without knocking a bunch of stuff off. So I was able to use the uh, form to pop it back in so I could add an extra layer. And then I made a new jig for uh, setting the spokes. And this time I did use the clay. This is um, uh, non-drying sulfur-free clay that's used for mold making uh, because it won't react with uh, resins uh, because of the lack of sulfur. Uh, so it's got a pretty, it's got a pretty firm consistency, uh, but it's not quite as stiff as the Super Sculpey. So it uh, was a little, it took me a second or two to kind of get everything lined up. Cat. So it took me um, a little bit more playing because uh, pressing on these, you know, uh, nearby would cause them to deform a little bit when I was putting in the wheel. So um, it's, uh, I don't know. I think I would prefer a stiffer clay for this process, but it worked out pretty well. So once I uh, got that set in properly, I could do the spokes for the large wheel. Now, the small wheel has 20 spokes and the large wheel has 18. And I think, I wish I had gone with 18 on the small wheel because they wouldn't meet as tightly at the hub and that would have made uh, placing them a lot easier. As you can see, like this one is kicked over just a little bit. It's part of the problem of having them so tight at the hub. But because I had a little space at the hub for these, I was able to space these spokes much, much better, much more easily. And I really, really like how this wheel came out. The uh, placement on the rim is pretty well centered for most of them. And the placement on the hub is pretty well centered as, as well. So I uh, feel really good about how the uh, large wheel came out. And I feel really good about its differentiation from the front wheel. Uh, I do wish this had 18. <laughs> but I'm not going back and making a new one because it was fairly time consuming, as you might imagine. So um, I have one more rear wheel to complete, and then I will be done with the, the Sharbanks wheels, except for the front steering wheel. And I have uh, some different design ideas rather than this kind of a spoked uh, system for that one. But I'll need to think about it a little bit more once I start working on it. But for right now, I'm good with uh, putting them on the shelf and starting work on another spot on the shower bank. Oh, come on. There. Well, you can see by that struggle uh, that these uh, spokes fit pretty tightly, and cutting the spokes to length uh, surprised me just a little bit in how tight the tolerance is for their uh, for their overall length. So. Uh, to find the individual spokes length, uh, you know, take the diameter of the inside of the rim, take the diameter of the outside of the hub, subtract that from the diameter of the rim, and then divide what's left by two. So you get the length of each spoke on each side. When I did that math, I came up with uh, 17 and a half 
uh, 30 seconds. All right, and there's roughly our 17. It looks like 17 there. Mm -hmm. And from here, that's closer to 17 and a half right there. So I figured maybe I could just cut them to 17. It'll be fine. No, that's a big gap. Uh, cut them to 18. No, they don't fit. 17 and a half was the number that was needed to get that kind of a tight fit just to make sure that we meet on all of these points here so that when I apply the solvent that I get a good bond with uh, each piece to the hub and to the rim. So anyway, I just wanted to make a quick comment on that about how uh, a half a 32nd, uh, which would be a 64th, uh, makes a big difference uh, in terms of the total spoke length. So that wraps up uh, the third part of this mini series. And I started with the wheels because I feel, felt, still feel, that they were going to be one of the trickier things, at least for me conceptually, because there's a, very, a lot of very small parts to uh, glue in and they all need to be really symmetrical because the eye always, the eye always picks out irregularities in geometric forms very easily. You can get away with trees being all weird, but you can't get away with a building being a little crooked unless it's supposed to be crooked. And so I wanted to start with them and get that out of the way. Now, no doubt there's going to be challenges as the construction continues, and there may be some that exceed the complexity of the wheels. I hope not. Uh, but I knew these were going to be fiddly, and I wanted to tackle them first to kind of get some movement along in the process. Uh, I do wish the front wheels had 18 spokes. That is going to bother me forever, and I am going to say, c'est la vie, for now. For now. Ugh, that was terrible. I keep telling myself, no, you're not touching them again. We'll see when the whole thing is constructed if it still bothers me as much. It may not, because when I do the front wheel of the uh, driver, you know, steering wheel, uh, that may alter my perception of, of how the wheels relate to each other. And I can't forecast that at this point. So they're done. They're going on the shelf. I will be revisiting them, of course, later on in the project. I'll be adding some dings, some wear to them, finishing the, the outside of the hub and, and probably some other work on them as well. So we're going to come back to those wheels a little later on for the next section, uh, the next maybe mini series, mini series. <laughs> I don't know why I started that. We will be looking at the engine, which I think of as a power plant because of the way combustion is being used in it, at least as I envision it. Uh, I was going to start on the body of the vehicle first. I'd rather fit the body to the engine rather than the engine to the body, because I don't know how big and what kind of shape the engine will end up being. And that means it would be easier to fit the vehicle around it rather than me be constrained on where I can put things for the engine, because I really want that to be a pretty jazzy piece it's going to really tie in a lot of the steampunk theme into the vehicle so it's important and i hope you liked the new format um i'm going to be making some changes some improvements and i like kind of shooting it all together so i can maintain workflow on it and then kind of go back and parse it out into sections so i hope you enjoyed kind of the grouping of this as well and i plan on this format going forward uh, but it does mean that there's sort of uh, bursts of work. And because of the size of the files and the editing, it, it may mean that I don't have a video coming out every week. So if I miss a week, um, you be patient. I'm going to be patient because I'm taking a much more relaxed approach to this. I found the pressure of trying to get out a video every week a little uncomfortable. So I am now going to get it out when I get it out the way I want it. And if it takes more work to get it the way I want it, I'm going to enjoy that work because I know the final product will make me happier. Questions and comments are always welcome down below. Please feel free. And while you're waiting for the next video, you may want to go over to Patreon and see some of the work I've been doing there. I've done some restructuring. I've changed the rewards and I'm doing a lot of organizing to make some of the resources that I have in my Patreon feed uh, a lot more easy to access. We have, that has been a problem, and I am putting that together in a brand new way that I think will make a lot more sense and make it a lot easier to find. So if that's something you're interested in seeing, you should drop over. Even a dollar a month 
very, very small contribution, very small, but it makes a huge difference for helping me keep this channel going. So uh, for those of you who have already become patrons, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. And it makes a big difference. But above all, you should come back to see the next stage of work on the Sharabang. I think it's going to be very interesting. And if you do come back, then you will see that I've come back soon, grammar, with another Terrence video.